Welcome viewers to Senior Teleclass on Tech TV. I'm Thomas Asarobodi, your chemistry, electric chemistry tutor. And today we are continuing the introduction to chemistry. And today we, by the close of the lesson, students will be able to distinguish between basic physical quantity and derived physical quantity. Then we shall also be able to uh, define certain terms or basic terms like atom, element, compound, and mixture, which you are familiar from your GHS science. And steadily, you will know some methods used to separate mixtures. Some of them you are familiar with at the GHS level. Don't forget that we are dealing with introduction to chemistry, but we have to know the basic aspects before we enter into SHS uh, chemistry. And when we talk about physical quantities, basic physical quantities, what are these? They are considered as basic because they do not depend on anything. And these physical or basic physical quantities are, one, we have length with the symbol L. And the SI unit used to measure length is meter with a symbol small m. We have mass. To measure masses, the symbol is m. And the SI unit used is kilogram with the symbol kg. Then we have time with the symbol t. And we measure time in seconds with the symbol s. Then we have electric current with a symbol capital I, and SI unit uses ampere with a symbol capital A. Then we have thermodynamic temperature. Some books, they will write absolute temperature. And when we go to states of matter, you will know why it is absolute or thermodynamic, but not simply temperature. And the symbol is capital T, and the SI unit uses Kelvin and the symbol is capital K. Then we have amount of substance, or amount of substance, the symbol is N. It is measured in mole, M-O-L, as the symbol. Then we have luminous intensity, which has the symbol IV, and it is measured in candela, with the symbol CD. So these seven quantities are considered as basic physical quantities. We have other measurements that we do, and they are, physical, they are physical quantities, and we call them as derived. Why do we call them as derived? They are obtained or derived from the seven basic physical quantities by either multiplication, division, or integration. Let's look at examples of these derived quantities. We know we have area. When we want to measure area, let's take square or a rectangle. For example, we have the area length times length. We normally use to say length times breadth. But whatever be the case, we are measuring length. And length has a unit of meter. So length times length will give us meter squared. So the unit for area is meter squared. Then we have volume. Volume is area times the height. And we know area is length times length. Height is also length. So we have length times length times length. And the unit used is meter cube. You see that we are obtaining this by multiplication. We have others that we can obtain by, say, division. Let's say density is also a derived quantity. Density is mass divided by volume. And mass is measured in kilogram. Volume is measured in meter cube. So we can write the unit as kg stroke m3 to the power 3 or kg per meter cube. When you see minus 3, we read it as per. So the unit for density is kilogram 
per meter cube. And the fourth one is velocity, how fast something moves within a certain time. So we have length divided by time, that is velocity. And the unit, as you see, the unit, the length is meter and time is second. All these are from the basic physical quantities. So the unit is meter per second and that is velocity. Then we have acceleration, rate of change of velocity, and it is velocity over time, or velocity divided by time. This time we have velocity which is a derived quantity, but time is basic quantity, and we are combining it to obtain uh, acceleration. And we know velocity from derived quantity, we have meter per second divided by another second. So the unit for acceleration is meter per second squared. Then we have force. Force is mass times acceleration. You see acceleration is a derived quantity, but the mass is a basic quantity. We are multiplying. A mass is measured in kilogram, and velocity is measured, uh, acceleration is measured in meter per second squared. And when we combine it, we have a new unit, which is called Newton, with capital N. We have pressure. Pressure is force over area. And force, area, they are both derived quantity. So we have the unit Newton per meter squared, or Pascal. So when you see Pascal, we, look, we see that it is the same as Newton per meter squared. And we have energy or work. That is force times length. This time the length is basic unit and force is a derived unit. And the force is measured in Newton and then the length is meter. And so we have unit as Newton meter. But Newton meter is the same as joule. So whenever we see joule, it is Newton meter. Then we have power, and power is, power is force times time, force is joule, and time is second. Power is work over time, uh, that is power, watt. Power is joule per second. Now we have some basic definitions, which all these you have seen them or you have learned them from your GHS level. What is an element? Element is substance composed of one kind of atom. Then we will look at what is an atom. Atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. So you know that when we, re we write chemical reactions, we are using some symbols, but what is taking part in that chemical reaction of the element, it is the atom. That's why we say the element is a substance made up of one kind of atom. So you have to know the difference between an element and an atom. Then we have a compound. Compound is obtained by combining two or more elements chemically. And from your GHS, you know whenever we talk about chemical reaction, it is something that we cannot separate to obtain the constituents or the components. And they undergo chemical change. And you know you have studied uh, chemical change, what is in it, and you know. So I want you to refer your GHS notes so that you follow what we are discussing now. Then we have a mixture. Mixture is also made up of two or more substances, but this time it is physically combined. When something combined physically, it means that we can separate them back to obtain the individual components that combine to obtain the substance. So physically, we have two substances. We have a compound, we have a mixture. One is obtained by chemical combination 
of these substances. Another is obtained by physical combination of these substances. And we are going to look at different methods that we use to separate the various components in a mixture. The first method, we have several methods, but at your level, uh, GHS, you saw these methods, and we are repeating it. Don't forget, there are certain questions either in objectives or even practical aspects in theory that you meet. You think that they are not important at SHS level. They are important in, at SHS level as you did some at GHS level. That is why we are going through all this and we are looking at the first method, which is called filtration. Now, filtration, you know, is a method that we use to separate insoluble substances from mixture of solid and liquid. We put the solid into a liquid, and the solid will not dissolve. And so we can separate the solid from the mixture. And the solid that we obtained, we call it as residue. And the liquid that we obtain after separation, we call it as filtrate. What are some of the apparatus that we use during the separation or filtration? We need to get our filter paper, which either you have seen it or not. Then we need a funnel. Funnel is also important, apparatus that we use. And then we have a container. This container is conical flask. So what do we do? We may have a mixture, assuming we have chalk dust in water in a beaker or sand in water in a beaker. We have it, and then we take our funnel and we put it in the container. In this case, we have our conical flask. We take our filter paper, and what do we do? We fold it. We divide it into two, and then we also divide it into two again. Then we have, and we open one end. And you see that we have constructed a funnel, and we put it inside the funnel, and we place it on top of the container. In this case, we have our conical flask. Then we take our mixture, we stir it so that the, resi the residue will not be left behind, and we pour it. As we pour, the liquid will move down into the conical flask, and the residue will be left. So that is the method we use to separate suspensions, that is insoluble solid in liquid. Our second method, students, is evaporation, which you are also familiar with. What are some of the apparatus? We have our tripod stand. We have the wire goes. We place it. And then we have our Benson burner. It is connected to a gas. We place it here and we light it. Then we have our Benson burner. Then we put our evaporating dish on top with a mixture. This time, it is not a suspension. It is a solution. Any method that we apply, we should have an aim. In the filtration, we may be interested in both the solid, the undissolved particles, and the liquid. So we apply it. But here, we are not interested in the solvent. So we heat, and as we heat, the solvent will escape or evaporate, and the solid that dissolved will be left. It can be sugar solution. It can be salt solution. When we need our salt or our sugar, we apply evaporation, which is a method that we use. We have another method which we call distillation. 
And distillation is a method we use to separate. It can be a solution or it can be dirty water. And we are interested in the liquid or the, say, let's take water. Let's take river water or any dirty water in case we want pure water to do something. But we need, we don't have that pure water. We apply distillation, especially in the lab when we are preparing solutions. Many solutions, we need to use distilled water because it contains no ions. And some will call it deionized water. And so distillation, we have so many methods. We have apparatus, we still use the Benson, the tripod stand, we use it. We use our Benson burner, we connect it to a gas, and then we put the container containing that mixture on top. We connect it to a condenser which will condense. We have thermometer to know the temperature at which it is boiling. Then the liquid which will come out it will initially come out as a vapor, but when it passes through the condenser, it will condense all the vapor to liquid, and the liquid obtained is called distillate. We have different types of distillation. We have simple or normal distillation. And the normal distillation, when we heat the compound, and it will not decompose at the boiling point, especially river water or dirty water, this. We also have fractional distillation. And fractional distillation, whenever we have mixture of liquids that have closed boiling points, let's take water and ethanol. Water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. Ethanol, 78 degrees Celsius. The difference is very close. So when you heat, there is possibility that the two solvents can evaporate. But as we move away from the heat source, the lower boiling liquid will still be in the vapor phase. And the higher boiling liquid will come down. And so the lower boiling liquid will be collected as distillate. So that is what we call a fractional distillation. It is the method they use to separate mixtures in crude oil. You see, crude oil, we have the gases that we put it in our cylinders in the house. We call it LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. Don't go and see LPG gas. If you see LPG gas, it is tautology. Because the gas itself is G. And from there, we also have the solvent. We have kerosene. We have petrol, diesel oil. All these have closed boiling points. And they are collected in a long tower we call fractionating column. So when you do organic chemistry, you will see how these components in crude oil are separated. Then we have distillation under reduced pressure. This method, when a compound decomposes on heating strongly, then we apply distillation under reduced pressure. In that method, we suck air from the system. Under states of matter, we will define what is boiling point. Uh, boiling point is simply defined as the temperature at which saturated vapor pressure above a liquid surface is equal to that of the atmosphere. And so, boiling point, if the air around is high, the boiling point will be high. So what we do is that we use a vacuum pump to suck air. In other words, we reduce the pressure in the system so that little heat supply will evaporate the solvent and the solvent will be condensed as distillate. We have other methods, but at your level, we will not go beyond these three uh, types of distillation. I have told you we have normal or simple distillation. We apply it to any solvent or any substance that will not decompose. We have fractional distillation. We apply it to mixtures that have of liquids which have closed boiling points. Then we have distillation under reduced pressure, which we use to separate liquids or substance that easily decompose, or especially those that also have high boiling points. We try to reduce the boiling point by sucking air from the system. 
And when we apply fractional uh, distillation or reduced pressure, we can get the compound. We have a fourth method, use of separating funnel. And this method is used to separate two immiscible liquids with different densities. So we use an instrument or apparatus we call separating funnel. So we say use of separating funnel. And we have the tap at the lower end. So when we have two liquids, I have oil here. And we know that oil will not mix with water. So when I put oil inside the separating funnel, and then I have water, which are also mixed. So when I mix the two liquids, and then we shake and we leave it to stand for a very long time, you see that the two solvents, they are immiscible. So you can see that the oil is at the top and the water is at the bottom. And we see the boundary. And so when we have these two, you can see that the oil is a little yellowish. And then the water is colorless. So when we want to separate them, we open the tap at the lower end. And you can see that the water, which is at the lower end, is coming the water is coming, we are separating. So that is the use of separating funnel. We are separating the liquid, the water, which has a higher density. That is why it is at the lower end. So when getting closer, I have to close the tap so that the oil will not mix with it. Then I'll take a different container. Then I'll later on open the tap to separate my oil. The two solvents do not mix, and that is the use of separating funnel. I hope you are enjoying it, because so that uh, we hope that when you go home, uh, though you will not get, but some of you can afford to buy, and then you try how to separate the mixture So you see that the oil is being separated. The oil is coming. So initially you saw that I mixed the two. And because they are different densities and they are immiscible, so these are the criteria that we use. Different densities and then immiscibility, they are not miscible. So I have separated the two solvents. And that is use of separating funnel. Then we have precipitation or decantation. This method, it is used to separate suspension as filtration. By filtration, we make use of apparatus. When we don't have apparatus to separate, we apply decantation or precipitation. And this time, we take the mixture, we allow it to stand for a very long time. And all the impurities will settle down. In the villages, this time we have boreholes and other things. But holding this morning time when it is rush hour for students to go to school, they will rush into water bodies like wells or rivers, and you see that it becomes muddy. So the same applies in the evening. Some will try to fetch water. So we take the water and then we leave it overnight. And in the morning, you see that every impurity will settle down. And our mothers used to pour them carefully into pots that we used to drink. And that is also a method we use to separate uh, mixtures, which is called precipitation or decantation. In some areas, they put some chemicals like alum. It helps to coagulate the impurities in it very fast. 
and that is also a method we use to separate. We have another method we call recrystallization. Recrystallization, we use it to separate impurities in solid. Look at the word re. Whenever we mention re, it is again. That means the substance is a solid, and we are trying to get it as a pure solid. It is impure solid, and we want to get it as pure solid. In other words, we are separating the impurities from it. And so we take a solvent we call best solvent or suitable solvent for recrystallization. And what do we mean by best or suitable solvent for recrystallization? It is a solvent in which the solid is insoluble when cold, but highly soluble when hot. And so in this method, which we call as recrystallization, we put the impure solid in the cold state of the solvent. And then we heat. When we heat, the pure part will dissolve. And the pure part, impure part will remain. So it becomes a suspension, but this time in the hot state. Then we do filtration in the, from the hot mixture. And when we separate all the impurities or insoluble substances, we allow the hot filtrate to stand for a very long time. When it cools down, the solid, which is insoluble, will precipitate out or will crystallize out. That is why we call it as recrystallization. Then we filter it, we dry, and then we keep it in a very good place. That is also a method for re, uh, separating these mixtures. And this time it is a solid which is contaminated with some dirty materials. And then we separate the dirty materials from it. Another method that we use to separate mixtures is chromatography. Now, what do we mean by chromatography? Chromatography is used to separate complex substances. Maybe GHS, you, it was mentioned to you that chromatography is a method that we use to separate blood. At least you know blood. We have pigments, we have dyes, we have extras from plants that we use. Now, the separation occurs due to different degrees to which the components move or distribute themselves between two career phases. We call one as stationary phase. And the phase, I mean P H A S E, not F A C E as your face. No. It is P H A S E, phase. That is chromatography. Then we have another phase we call mobile phase, which normally is a liquid. Then the substances in the mixture distribute themselves differently between the two carrier phases. The one which is strongly absorbed or soluble in the stationary phase is always found closer to the starting point. And the one which is more soluble in the mobile phase is found closer at the solvent front. Where the solvent reaches, we call it a solvent front. So we separate the two. And so chromatography is used to separate complex materials. Then we have sublimation. There are certain compounds. You know sublimation is when a compound changes from solid to a gas without passing through the liquid state. Normally when we heat solid, it should melt to liquid before it will go to the vapor. But this time you heat it direct, it will move from solid to gas. When you cool it, it will also move from gas to solid. Now sublimation, we have the tripod stand with our benzene flame on it. Then we hang funnel, which is a glass, not the rubber one as this, 
and then we heat. When we heat, the substandard sublimes will move, and we call it as a sublimit, and the one which does not sublime will be left behind. That means we have separated the two substances. Then the last one, we have magnetic separation. So students, we have discussed this separation methods. Questions are, question one, name one physical method that can be used to separate the components in the following mixtures. We have eye ink, ammonium chloride and sodium chloride, palm oil and water, sun and iron filings. So get work fast and let's see the answers you have provided. Mark it yourself whether you obtain four over four. And the solution is for ink, we have chromatography. Then we have sublimation, use of separating funnel, magnetic separation. Mark it yourself. I hope you had four over four. Let's look at the second question, and then you work the second question also. Name two apparatus used in each of the following separation methods. We have fractional distillation, evaporation, paper chromatography. Well, let's see. Are you finished? So mark it yourself and check whether you obtain three over three. We have condenser, clamp stand, distillation, flask. Uh, tripod stand, thermometer, benzene burner, all these, whether you're able to write the two, the second one evaporating dish, tripod stand, the third one filter paper boiling tube. And so then take this assignment so that next time when we meet, we shall look at it. Assignment number one, state the three branches of chemistry as we discussed in lesson one. Two, state three safety precautions observed in the laboratory. And three, give two basic and two derived physical quantities and their respective units. Four, state three methods of separation of mixtures and give one example of each. Students, thank you. And we shall meet next time to continue our discussion in electric chemistry. Bye-bye. <laughs>